Now, what type of first refusals are out there? Let's talk about those. My name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor here with Southern Group Ottawa. And if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe so you can get more and more episodes about everything real estate related here in Ottawa. So let's dig into it. The first one is the preemptive right. So this actually allows the holder of the right, let's just say the buyer in this situation, to accept or reject before the owner accepts any other property. And it's a very specific type of deal, very specific offer. So I'll give you an example, really, really quick. Say I put an offer for 650K on a, on a townhouse uh, and it's a first refusal on me selling my property XYZ. That's the only condition there is. And I give them 30 days from that day. That's the, the, the amount of time that I'm allowed to go and market my property. In the event that the seller gets another offer, that offer could be 700K. They're not allowed to accept it because I've already put a first refusal. I have the option to accept or refuse. I have also absolutely no knowledge of what that offer looks like, but it just in that time when I made the offer, that was the deal. So it's a specific deal. That's what the preemptive right is. Now, the other thing too that comes with that is, is that there's always a time, time bound. Uh, when I say time bound is, I mean the time that when we make the offer, we decide whether it's 30 days or 60 days or whatever the amount is that we need to be able to go and sell that subject property that we kind of put in the, in the offer. Where does this come handy? So first refusal is not only for, you know, buying a home or, you know, sometimes it can actually be used for buying a business. Like, let's just say I am the, um, you know, second right hand man in, in a business and I've liked this business and what have you. I can actually go in and put a first refusal to my boss and say, hey, in the event that you decide to sell this business, I'd love to take that first crack at it. I'd love to be able to first write a refusal to, you know, buy it at a certain deal that we've accepted in the event that you decide to market it, I'd love to be the first one that you come to. So this is where first refusal kind of comes to some common scenarios. Let's discuss that. Uh, so for example, the neighbor's right. Sometimes certain properties, uh, maybe when they've developed the, the plan or maybe when the, you bought it or what have you, uh, there was some sort of talk between you and the neighbors about possibly them amalgamating the land or buying the piece of the land from you or what have you that neighbor actually went ahead and put some sort of an offer in place and they put a first refusal in place that in the event that you decide at some point to want to sell, they'd love to be the first person to take a crack at it. Now, sometimes they might actually not define it as far as, as part of the deal and as far as what the amount should be, but it's just they're setting up a first refusal, which means that they're allowing themselves the opportunity to be marketed to first and accept or reject that deal based on the market price. So it's not always exactly set up on a market price ahead of time, because you never know. I might set a, a first refusal as a neighbor for something in five years from now. Tenants right. So this is another one. Uh, tenants right is basically when, you know, I could set this up in either a commercial or residential lease. Uh, basically as a tenant, uh, I have the option that in the event that my uh, leaseholder, uh, which is the landlord, decides to sell, I have the ability to go, hey, I set up a first refusal. I'd love for you to give me the opportunity to go ahead and purchase the property at such value or at market value at the time. That's something that you can agree on when you're setting the lease agreement prior. Notification is a big, big thing when it comes to first refusal. So we've talked about time bound. So for example, like I said earlier, we might set up the property to be sold within 30 days, 60 days or what have you. But then what you also did that, you know, we talked about that clock starting. The clock starting, that's something called the notification. So basically from the moment that I put the offer in and, you know, things kind of go one way, when another offer comes in, we had set up a time, we called it the notification time. So this is the time that the seller has to, the second they get that offer, if they are thinking of accepting or rejecting or even entertaining that offer, allow me that notification time so I can go and prepare whether I want to accept it or pass on the first refusal. Matching the third party's offer. This is interesting. And then this is one of the th reasons why first refusal can be very interesting sometimes. There's so many different nuances to first refusal that a lot of folks don't know. So when you want to match the third party's offer, this is something that the seller can actually put in place as a condition. So basically we said buyer one comes to me and says, hey, Mr. Seller, I'd love to buy your property and blah, blah, blah. You, you know the drill. The seller can actually say, me as a seller can say, hey, look, um, I want to put a condition in there 
that if a certain offer comes up or if somebody comes up with X, XYZ uh, evaluation for the property, I'd love for you to either match it or beat it or beat it by 1%, whatever the case may be. We can essentially negotiate anything within that and that's called matching the third party's offer. So all of this was essentially We've talked about it from a buyer's perspective as a first refusal. There's also the seller first refusal, which is a little kind of weird, but it is definitely something that we wanna, wanna kind of address. What that is, as a seller, uh, I could actually put in a condition that in this is a first refusal and it's first refusal, but basically I'm accepting the offer as a first refusal, but for the seller, which means that me, the seller, accepting your offer at such and such terms provided that I'm able to buy such and such property and be able to close on it, and I can determine that within a significant amount of time of let's say 30 days, 60 days or whatever, with also a notification option. Confusing, isn't it? This is why I'm here. My name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And for more videos like this about real estate, commercial or residential, please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, you can get more and more videos like that. Let's talk real estate.